Hey everybody, it's Kate Devon, your host of Communicate, where we just chat it up with various creators from around the world. And we have Courtney Cox for this episode. Not only has she played in an all-women metal band called the Iron Maidens with uh, Nita Strauss, just to name one of the members, uh, but she's in Burning Witches now. She's touring the world. Hi! <laughs> What's up? This is my first time actually on Instagram Live. Funny. Yo, really? <laughs> I hate That's very exciting so then. Bear with me. I and like this is what you get because I'm, I'm still waiting for my bag from India. So like all my stuff's in there. So you got like, you know, Delco in the house. <laughs> Class. I love the energy. We are literally kind of matching already with our glasses. I know. I'm like, our... I'm still like getting used to seeing this ring light, and I'm like, how the hell do people get rid of it? You know, like you, the reflection. But I don't you look care. wonderful. You look I great. I know too. you can probably see my laptop and my reflection here. But hello, everybody. Hi. We have Courtney Cox here. She is an immense talent, to say the very least. Um, you're just doing so much. So let's just get right into yeah. it. You recently performed at. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. The Bangalore Open Air. Bangalore. Bangalore oh, <laughs> Open Air. Very I had nice. to ask about 10 different times. There we go. <laughs> nice. That is India's biggest rock and metal festival. So that's like a very big deal. Uh, and the photo of the crowd that you took was super cool. Everybody looked like they had great energy. So tell me about the rigs that you use on stage and your set list. Anything that you want to say about that particular show? Because that looked epic i mean india metal can't get much better than yeah, that i mean it, it, i mean it was oh um, i mean i think even getting there it took me 23 hours in total with layovers and, you know when the promoter buys the the airline ticket for you you know it's just gonna be a long day <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Uh, I got there uh, the day before we played. It was a, a two day. I mean, I could be wrong, but I think it was only two days, so Friday and Saturday. And I got in. Uh, the, the other girls in the band, they went to see Creator that night. But I'm like, girls, I just can't. So I just stayed at the hotel. <laughs> I'm so tired. But uh, the next day, you know, I still had jet lag because, you know, it was one of those fly in, fly out situations. But, you know, on our show day, uh, we, it got to the, well, it took like two hours to get to the festival because traffic in India is also something I've never experienced before. And there are cows in the street because you know they're sacred and all. It's just kind of culture shock for me. And I've been around the world, but this is cows. Yes, yeah, sacred. Cow. Is that a cow? Yes, it's a cow. Yes, um, I do believe so. Yeah, it's just, and we got there. It was really hot. It was, uh, I mean, I'm in Celsius now since I'm in Europe. Uh, it was like 35 degrees, which I think is like approaching 100 for us or the high 90. Oh, I know someone's gonna be like, I don't know the difference between the two. No, I don't right now. <laughs> but it was hot. And thankfully, there was breeze, but uh, it just the, the people running the festival. Uh, the fans, they were just so great. It was it was such a great festival. And then walking on stage uh, just to this crowd, as, as you've seen, or if anyone's seen it, it's posted on my Instagram photo of the crowd. They were just... It was epic, yeah. You know, and especially, you know, I've been in a tribute band for 15 years prior to the Burning Witches. So it's like you're, you, you're used to people singing along to the trooper and stuff because, you know, it's Iron Maiden. Everyone knows. Right. But it's a whole different feeling going on stage and feeling the energy and seeing the crowd sing along to originals and stuff. So I got to experience that feeling for the first time. And then uh, rig wise, um, for me, it's uh, it's kind of the luck of the draw everywhere you go and you can't travel with your own amp. Um, so that's, that's why I'm my pedal board. I always travel with my Freeman BEOD pedal. So I just run that uh, through any clean channel of any amp and I think this time what did I have I can't even remember I think it was some kind of Marshall nice very it's cool behind. very very nice. friends anyways you never know what I'm playing but everyone thinks it's you know when I don't have my actual Freeman half stack it's just whatever I'm given and I'm just running the clean channel and the effects loop that's it my pedal board goes everywhere so yeah your your tone always sounds amazing so that's awesome that you're like so chill about the rigs and everything and of course like gotta make do with what's on stage yeah. and what's with you know you, what's you happening. Can't stress. I mean I've learned over God, the last 
18 years in this business like you it just the stress is not worth it because the outcome is going to be the same so you just have to learn to just make things happen with whatever i mean that's, that's the business though yeah yeah <laughs> As long as it turns off on, I'm like, great, thanks. For sure. I see we actually have a, a Burning Witches fan page tuning in, I believe. I want to say from Argentina. Argentina from <laughs> Hi. Hello, hello. Very nice. So, so you haven't just been to India. Going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. You haven't just been to India. You've been traveling all over the world, that's for sure. So tell me about some of the studio sessions that you've had uh, with Burning Witches, since we have some fans uh, rolling on in. And for example, some of the time you spent recording in Switzerland. I saw you were also there, so that's yeah. awesome. Well, I'm constantly in and out of there. I don't <laughs> it's like, when's the last time you're there? I'm like, I don't actually know. Well, obviously, the last Europe tour. But the first studio time I had, I was actually coming off the um, Accept tour. That the maidens were on supporting except and that's when uh, i was actually asked to you know help the girls fill in and then they're like you know we'd like to hear your interpretation of a couple songs and so i went in and uh, did unleash the beast world on fire and tomorrow and this is after, like, over, awesome. like a week so i'm like okay here and here's your studio time go but <laughs> it was it was such a blast you know because we've been friends for years you know and it's always cheesy to say we're like sisters but i mean it, it really is then, you know, like, which is always oh, definitely a coven, you know, not to be really lame, but. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, sometimes it's okay to be corny. I'm, I'm living on the cob sometimes. So it's totally okay. <laughs> Story of my life. It's absolutely all right. I, I love the passion. It's so, it makes it so much more awesome too, that you get to travel to these different studios too. Yeah. And the creative juices have always got to be flowing that way. Yeah, you just walk in like you think you're prepared, but you know, that's like the really great thing of being in an actual studio and not doing like what a lot of musicians do now, like do everything at home, right? You know, on their laptop yes. with Logic or Cubase or whatever they have, Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a whole organic, and actually, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's kind of intimidating when you're in an actual studio with all the knobs and this and a sound engineer here and producer here, Not much so. But when you, when you get this sense of oh my god like don't f up or whatever a lot of things you didn't hear before come out like solo mm -hmm. or you know notes words and so i actually really enjoy it as stressful as it is well at least i think it is like my brain tells me like oh god you're going in the studio <laughs> <laughs> and then you kill it you know that, yeah, that's totally like, a musician why, thing why the hell though. am i scared you know it's like it's just i guess it's that uh I, I don't, wouldn't say a full-on perfectionist, but you know, you want to have your best takes and don't want to waste time because time is money. It um, is absolutely, but you're you're definitely releasing some very cool stuff with Burning Witches. I saw they had uh, with Courtney Cox when I was looking it up on Instagram to put uh, for the music in my reels and stuff. And your guitar solos were yeah, were first. awesome. And then yeah, uh, so recently Recently, I was in the studio. I'm not really allowed to talk about it, you know, because, <laughs> but the, the work on the next record has begun and I'm really excited about it. Very nice. So look forward to that, everybody. Definitely some new music going to be coming out. So what are some of your biggest musical endeavors uh, coming up for Burning Witches uh, this year? Oh. Uh, uh, besides the original music, is there, I saw there was a comment that said, are you coming to Japan? Are you coming to Argentina? Uh, is there anything, uh, anything like that? that? That's the thing, like sometimes, I mean, I have to say with maidens, that we do have to bite our tongue sometimes and be hush-hush because it is a, an agreement <laughs> with, you know, promoters and bookers and that stuff. But um, coming up, a, a big thing for us. I mean, we had a, a tour already in the UK with them, but uh, KK's Priest, uh, LA Guns, in about two weeks starts, ooh, a little more than two weeks. I think it starts March 7th in Florida. Nice. So, yeah, Great so place to start. Really cool. And good for me, I get to come back to America. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I get, coming on back. I get to go home. And I think uh, it actually ends uh, in Glenside. Oh, I think it depends. Yeah, Keswick Theater, which is only like 40 minutes from where I grew up. So it's like, hey, mom, nice. you know. <laughs> nice. So it's like a family visit to get to play, visit yeah. family. Embarrass myself in front of my entire family. Yeah. Why do I feel like shows are more nerve wracking when your family's there? No, well, for me, 
me, it's it's not nerve wracking, but it's like, you know, any type of like a ballad. It's happened to me before once when I was playing the M3 Festival with Femme Patel. It was like the first time my mom mom see me play live in a very long time because I moved away from home at 18. So this is like wow. the first time since I left, she got to see me live. And we went into I'm a Rebel, which is a really big ballad. And I spot my mom in the crowd and she's crying. And then I start crying and then the rest of the band starts crying. It's like a domino effect. It's like a so domino it's effect. Sad. And then there's a video of you like my mouth, mouthing to my mom, stop crying, please. <laughs> oh my so, goodness. I, I would say it's embarrassing. I just have to avoid eye contact with my mom and my cousin Sherry every show because they just start crying. I mean, it could be something as heavy as like Angel of Death and there's my cousin Sherry and my mom crying. Balling. I, I had no control over this. They're like, we're so <laughs> proud, you know? Oh. And you, you, like you said, you've been in the game for a long time. So I can only imagine like how proud they are. And that takes cinema, talent, absolutely all of that good stuff. So regarding your talents on the guitar. Tell me about some of your favorite gear at the moment. And in contrast, what are some features on a guitar that you absolutely do not want? For example, like string gauge, etc. Oh God, All right, this is gonna be an hour. <laughs> um, you know, for me, I am not a gear head at all. I mean, I've been on the road. Gotcha. And so people try to sit me down like, all right, let's talk gear, let's talk shop. And I'm just like, uh, cricket sound in the back like, like can mm, we not mm. no i i hate it so much for me it's you know i haven't really changed since i started my pedal board with the exception of like the friedman pedal because it came out like i forget how many years ago right and, and, really changed. and i remember i had a i was in australia and um some people from boss effects came out they want to do a whole like run down on my pedal board and I'm like, oh, so uh, what certain uh, settings do you have? And I'm like, I was a very, very lazy beginner, and I just set everything to noon, 12 o'clock, and it sounded good, and I, I've never changed. <laughs> You're very <laughs> they, lucky. They were laugh, laughing and couldn't believe it. Like, yeah, 12 o'clock and go. Done. That's awesome. <laughs> I love how you, even if you started like so simple, not caring about gear or anything, that's awesome that you found a tone and really no settings, whatever, that you like it's from fun. the beginning, didn't have to like really change it that much, you know? Yeah. Some people spend so much time dialing and trying to figure out. Their and it's things. funny, it's so simple, but it's like a, a, like a guy with a thermostat in the house. Yeah. If someone slightly goes like one of the, I know, immediately put it back. It's not as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You hear me from the green room. It's different. Turn it back. <laughs> I love the honesty because I, I, so many guitarists are gearheads, but at the same time, like yours truly, or like you, yours truly definitely is not much of a gearhead either. <laughs> admittedly, it's you know, it's it's fancy, fancy stuff. But you have a pedal that you love. You you go with whatever rig is on stage, and you still sound amazing. Yeah. So that's epic. And it's like. So, so, I mean, I guess it's just my ears or just, you know, I just it's always had this old school mentality. Like, I'm always going to be a tube amp girl. Because like, gotcha. you know what? I know if something goes wrong, I someone know how to fix it or this new tech world and stuff. If there's, there's a power surge or something, I know you obviously should be protecting for that. If something goes down with a camper, I, I'm not going to know what the F to do. <laughs> so it's like, like it's with an app, I'm like, okay, I check the fuse, check the tube. I know if it, it's a cable on the pedal, like throw a battery in it, change cables, change this, you know. It's, Real. <laughs> I guess it's a, kind of like a, you know, a car person. It's like they know how to change their Yeah, yeah no, that. for real. Know, That's exactly what it's like. You can't do anything, you know. Exactly but Exactly uh, what it's like. Absolutely. So, so favorite gear is like the Friedman stuff. I have Fried, my Friedman Butter Slacks, which is kind of a hybrid they did for me with a BE100. I know it's here's the gear talk coming. The BE100, uh, obviously my signature comparisons, I swear by them. And then to get to the negative side of things, what do I hate? <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I think I got to be careful on this one. <laughs> Uh, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of an easygoing person. So it's, you know, I guess I already kind of touched on it. I don't really like the, uh, I, I mean, it's just not, not for me. I, I'm sure I'll end up 
having to play one at some point, but like uh, the modelers and campers and stuff. I know they're convenient and people swear by them. Mm -hmm. but, and like, oh, you can model your amp into it. Like, you know, I've heard my amp and it doesn't sound like that to me. And it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it's a pitchfork for me right now, everyone. <laughs> it's just not my, my thing, you know? It's like, but I guess that's the only thing. I don't really, I'm not, I'm not even gonna say hate. Is hate's a really strong word, and I hate to use, hate to hate, but <laughs> hate or hate. But uh, yeah, that's my. I don't know. I just try to be a lovely person real. for everyone. Real, <laughs> yeah. real. I can I have my own opinion. Their own. This is why I keep my own, opinions everybody. to myself because I always get in trouble. <laughs> to each their own, for sure. But I do see. Let's see. There are some comments coming in. Uh, somebody says favorite strings. Do you have a favorite? Um, uh, my, I've been with D. Actually, my first package string was a DR set, and I've been okay. with DR for a long time. Uh, I use their Veritas 10 to 52s at the moment, and the Maidens I use their 9 to 46. So that was standard, but I went up a notch, and I might go up one more notch because uh, for anyone which is in C sharp standard or for European oh. pieces, yeah. So. That's awesome. We got, uh, what is your fave witches song to play live? That's probably a mood thing, you know, depends on the mood of the day. Uh, I mean, I love them all. There's only one I don't like to play. And they always laugh at me, see a live, I just hate playing the song for some reason. That's a great song, but it's just something for me. It's, I think it's so early in the set, I want it to be lower in the set. I think that's why it's Yeah, tough. I feel that. We always start with Unleash the Beast off the, the Dark Tower album that came out last May. And that's, I mean, if you're not warmed up, like we're all like, why is this the one we're starting with? Because it's like yeah. a really fast song. But um, oh, what I, God, I don't know. It's always hard. I, I got this question a lot in the meetings too. It was just, I don't know, there's just so many good songs. There are. And you don't want to be biased, like, oh, the ones I re recorded. Yeah. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> but, um, I don't know, I really love playing Fly the Valkyries, uh, Evil Witch I love doing, which is not the new album. That one's really cool. Yes. I, I love the ballad tomorrow. We play that a few times. But no, it's just like, there's just such, it's great songwriting and definitely more of a wheelhouse for me metal wise and how heavy it is compared to the, the Maiden stuff. So, cause you know, obviously, I love King Dime, Merciful Fate, and like just Slayer and all that priest, especially priests with them, you know. It, it's just, it's more of my style of metal, so. Right on. You have a huge variety of metal styles under your belt. You were talking about ballads, too. So that's epic, but that, that's awesome that you're like starting on such a high energy song, too. Like, <laughs> no, it's not. Right? So it's like, not awesome. This is a bad it's idea. Awesome, but it's not, you know, it gets the crowd going. Yeah. Absolutely. So what is your advice for some smaller artists? And by the way, everybody, we're nearing a little bit to the end of this interview here. But this has been Courtney Talks, and she is in Burning Witches traveling everywhere. Uh, new music coming out. <laughs> yes, N new music coming out very, very soon. So what is your advice for some smaller artists hoping to travel the world like you as a guitarist? And what are some obstacles that you have perhaps overcome that others can learn from? Um, uh, this is going to be tough to answer or to give advice because you know what, the, the music business, the music scene, music world was different when I started, you know, social media wasn't a thing. Yes. You had to go out and play shows and if you wanted to advertise your show, you had to go print out little flyers and go to the rehearsal rooms and put them under every door, I love every that. bar. And it was, it was, all about playing, getting your band out there, getting your face seen. And you know, if you had to be the curtain jerker of the first band at like 1 p.m. or whatever, a, a festival or whatever, with only like your mom there, you know what, you did it. Right. You kept, you kept, keep doing it. But now, and I hate to say it, social media is king. You gotta get a following. It's a lot of, I mean, the labels these days, not like, I mean, I wasn't alive back then, but the 80s and stuff, everything is completely, bipolar to completely change the landscape know. is so different, so different now yeah and you know what they are they are looking at the socials they are looking at the youtube videos they are looking at this are you gonna be living in a mansion no but any support any pr helps so get your following up i mean i hate social media as much as the 
next person, but you know what? You want to be in this business, you have to do it. You got to suck it up. I mean, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out this thing. <laughs> I'm so glad we got you on. You know, awesome. that every time I, I can do a jam, like I, all the comments are like, what's up with your crappy video? I'm like, I don't know how to do a professional video. I, you know, I was out touring. I don't know all this stuff. <laughs> But that's, it's, um, with social media, I mean, I think the only thing that goes across all generations is that, you know, you just have to be passionate because it is tough. If it was, e if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. I mean, I have my dark times, I have my high, high times all in between, but I just, you can't have just no feel of, of the fear of failure or there's just no point because you'll drive yourself insane trying to compare yourself to this person or that band or this right that. On. You, you just have to constantly remind yourself why you're you're playing and you know and set little goals not i mean everyone goes oh i want to be a rock star but you know what there's the ladder you got to build you know if i get to you know when i was a kid you know first show there's five people the next show there was 10 for me that was that was like wow there's you know right on. Yeah. And, 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 any little build is something yeah you know you just got to remind yourself that you know if you want it that bad you'll find it I, th I think that's excellent advice especially in terms of appreciating the baby steps in this business you know even if you just have one or two more people coming to your next show that's still a step and you don't have to be a rock star overnight and Courtney is right unfortunately or fortunately however you want to see it regarding social media uh, and it's important too not to be a, a one trick pony and not just be on one platform and and to do it all you know you got to be in this vast landscape nowadays and put your all into your platforms which is a lot for independent artists yeah, even if but you suck at said, it look at even if you suck at it look at me <laughs> you are great at it you i love what you post like i love some of the slideshows you post and just you in the studio you know sometimes you see these accounts with just professional images and stuff which is awesome like to each their own with their aesthetic but i love how real you are and you're just yeah i, love, I mean even for me like what i want to see from artists online and you know people I look up to I, I like to see them in their PJs and yeah, the that's you awesome. know getting a coffee with the wrong name on it you know stuff like that like stuff you don't see like I, I expect the professionally shot photos and you know the music videos and all that stuff but like yeah but it's like I want you know remind me that you're human you know because what you see on social media is not what it is 24 7 you don't see the mistakes really most but so when someone posts mistakes and being real and that's what i mean i believe people eat up more than here's this perfectly shot photo or video or yeah. you know millions takes of someone playing a solo but you haven't seen the other takes you know you know stuff like that so yeah just people to eat love it to see it. they love to see the process and uh, the behind the scenes yeah. stuff just the the realness of it all and like you were saying you said something about about failure too for me, if you can't fail publicly, you're not ready to succeed either, you yeah. know, if, if you're starting yeah. out um, or, or any time, really. People just love to see realness. So yeah. perfect. It's all about humility. Like, if you can't laugh at yourself at any point, you're in the wrong business. Because Spider on the wall. Where? Mine? Where? <laughs> Great, because I need spider. <laughs> I know. That's the comment that got my attention. Hmm. Well, I don't see it, so. Well, I'm not sleeping tonight. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to vacuum some of these <laughs> some of these cobwebs up here. But I got one more question for you, and I feel like this is a, a great way to kind of end this interview, and I'm so glad that we got some supporter questions in, too. Who are some artists that you would absolutely love to collaborate with this, this year? Dear. Oof. Or next year, you know, however long the time I guess, really. <laughs> I don't even know what year it is. I know. These, they're, they're all like meddling together at this point. All I know. Like, well, post, post COVID, I'm like, it's I all know. blurred. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't even say the C word. I'm not going to say it. Um, uh, I mean, for me, always uh, King Diamond. I mean, I would love to just even be in a room with instruments, Metallica, uh, Priest. There's just, you know, all the people that I, I looked up to, still look up to. But you know, I'm, I'm the kind of person, you know, 
they don't have to have this golden era metal status. You know, I just like to jam and I'll let play with anyone. But, you know, good songs are good songs. So, right and yeah, it's for me, but King Diamond. King Diamond, <laughs> yeah. Them, but, yeah, I don't know. I really don't think about that stuff. I kind of just try to keep my eye on the prize with what I'm personally doing. And like, obviously, the witches, we want to make sure this next album just, just hits. So just focus. Right on. And we got we got some people saying with Nita, perhaps. I know she's very busy. Very uh, busy. Are we, we've been trying to collaborate for God, well over a decade That's now. It's been a decade. Adult friendships, though, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> it's, no, 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 no. it's like I'm everybody's so other. busy. <laughs> <laughs> gotta schedule your your um your hangouts like are are you free uh september 5th of, of no, 2025 like, text, like hey what are you doing i'm like oh i'm in japan she's like oh okay i'm in brazil <laughs> right on i know you you are absolutely everywhere so definitely everybody check out courtney's upcoming shows and the burning witches project definitely the solo stuff too because you're always doing that oh, yeah. but again i love how we're kind totally. of acting right now that's epic it was it was awesome to talk to you and to see all of you guys as well yeah. i will i will let you go now because i know you're you need your rest nope. you definitely have so much I, i'm off. still waiting on my check luggage from india it's supposed to be delivered right yeah, now. yeah um, i hope it gets delivered real soon for I sure my contacts <laughs> right waiting on them contacts absolutely so yeah we got people excited for for a solo album too i saw in the comments yeah. so that's awesome it'll, it'll be out eventually but like i said before uh, which is his priority right now so uh, any uh, musical composition or focus right now is on the next album and free time i do my own thing but focus on burning witches tomorrow. right on well it was awesome to talk to you i can't wait to see what you do next yeah. Gonna be well, so I, I, I felt like I haven't seen your face in a long time, other than like random posts. And, I and know, a jam for sure. So many years ago. I know. <laughs> oh, like with the shred collabs yeah. and everything, and definitely the Guitar World run too. Definitely a long yeah. run of articles, but I, I, I'm a big ball of creativity. I find myself doing a lot of different things. So <laughs> coming back to the interviews for sure, because they're a lot of fun. Yeah, but definitely great. take care. Uh, I hope to see you at a show soon for okay. sure. Thank you very much. And thanks to all who are here. And yeah, see you soon. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Take care, everybody. All right. Cheers.